What's up guys, it's Chris, and we're going back to 1992 when I was uh, a younger man, and this was my main computer. Uh, this is an Amiga 2000 HD with a hard drive and RAM and later on upgraded. Uh, so what I got going on is this this computer is approximately 30 something years old now I have not turned it on in a very 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 long time so let's get into it and see a if it turns on uh, about nine years ago I added compact flash to this kinda like what I was doing with the other videos uh, this originally came with a 52 megabyte hard drive this melted thumb drive is a one gigabyte Memorex that I've had for 12, 10, 12 years probably longer so just for comparison one gig 52 megabytes uh, I think this is like four gig now I'm not sure we're gonna fire this up uh, this does have several upgrades over the stock which uh, we're going to open up and look into. Uh, it, it still works. So let's uh, zap this up to the television here. And see what we get. So this is the Hackintosh I normally use. And we're going to fire up the Amiga. There's a power switch in the back. Power light comes on. Power light still comes on. Let's make sure I'm on video. Also, I turn the TV on. Do, do. Now, this will look funky on here because the resolution on the Amiga is like 320 by 200 for a regular TV. Okay, it's on PC. And this has a 50 megahertz. Uh, overclocked custom chipset. It is based off of the Supra Turbo 28, which was a simple add-in sidecar for the Amiga 500 slot in the CPU slot for a 2000. We'll go over that in a minute. Uh, on the Supra Turbo 28, normally it's 28 megahertz. I don't think this is booting. Oh, and I have some hard drive activity. Oh, well, there we go. Look. 1993. Uh, yeah, oh, wow. Ah, the clock says February 5th, 1992. Let me see if I can zoom in on this a little bit. Now, I have it on an angle because I'm not sure about the resolution clarity. So, let's see. Uh, let me get e sysinfo. I'm going to run a sysinfo, which was public domain. Written by Nick Wilson in Australia, which has become the number one testing tool for Amigas for board speed. Whoops, damn it. If anyone would like to contribute a nice tripod to me, I would appreciate it. All right, so this has a 1 meg uh, 8372B, A, Fat Agnes, uh, Standard Denise, uh, CIA's. Paul, whatever, the custom chipset. Uh, right now, it is running 15 kilohertz monitor. This does have a, a flicker fixer card in it, so that's why I'm able to display it on a VGA input on this HDMI television, which does have a VGA input. So, uh, memory, it has 8 megs of fast RAM, which would be expansion memory uh, equivalent to a SIM. It has one megabyte of chip RAM which is off the Agnes and that's it now you can't address more than eight megs of RAM on an Amiga without a CPU accelerator card even though I have a Super Turbo 28 in the in the slot it's not gonna register as anything it's like a 68,000 so 
This is me. It's currently running at 42 megahertz. The red is me. Uh, this, wrong mouse. This right here, 6.43 times faster than a stock Omega 2000. It's faster than uh, 68,000, 2000, 7 megahertz is the base. A 1200, 14, 2500, 14, 3000 at 25. Blows me away because it has FPU. And of course, the 68040 uh, Omega 4000, which is my dream machine. I don't even come close. So if I shrink it, I'm a little tiny notch compared to the Omega 4000. So let's crack it open now that we know it works and let's see what's inside. Okay, so we're going to remove the serial mouse and the keyboard just to get them out of the way for now. Oh my gosh. To open an Amiga, there are five screws. There are four on the sides, which I have replaced in the past with the thumb screws with the big heads on them from a PC. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the power uh, and we'll go over ports and what it's got. I'll do that before I open it up. I'm missing a screw apparently on this so it looks like uh, it broke off. So one, two, three. Now on the back of this thing, like holy moly. This is an on off switch for the Super Turbo 28 overclock to 50. Off, on. There's no FPU, it's just a like, kind of a cache slash accelerator, pseudo accelerator. Uh, this is a microwave flicker fixer. You can notice it's got RGB video on it, but on my uh, monitor here, it came with a uh, Amiga. You see, I wrote on it. Amiga to VGA, and it's a 15 pin RGB or 15 pin VGA to the normal 9 RGB. And I do have the original monitor for it, it's down here. This is a Commodore 2002 monitor. Um, it had a video port, which let me see that. It had a video port right here, which would use like an A520 adapter or a DB23. Uh, Amiga monitor cable. You also had a standard parallel port, external disk drive, uh, composite video out, uh, left and right audio, and a serial port. Over here, this is the SCSI DB25 out, standard power supply, on off switch, regular Molex tile power connector. Removing the lid. My word. Uh, October 1991 on my date which is around when I bought it yep okay so this has been upgraded this is this looks like a Commodore board this looks like a 4 8 uh, no I don't know if this is a GVP 4008. I think this is a GVP 4008 uh, hard drive controller. It is just a SCSI. I'm going to try and do this. So it is just a SCSI connector with eight SIMs of one megabyte configurable. The chipsets by AMD. Can you believe that? It's back before they made chips for themselves. Uh, Looks like it has a power connector. A hard drive is attached to this, but unplugged. It is a quantum fireball from my old Mac at 500 megabytes. Wow. Must be, Oh, this is from the my LC. It has a little separator. Normally, sometimes there was a bar that was put through these holes in the front here for support for the monitor. The case is pure steel. This is an expansion systems data flyer SCSI board itself with what looks to be a SCSI. Where's this IDE? No, nope, this is an IDE because it has an IDE 40 pin to a compact flash board right here with a 4 gigabyte uh, SanDisk CF Ultra card. The original SCSI cable runs from the controller to the CD-ROM. Here's your floppy disk underneath the original power supply to a SCSI CD-ROM. 
over here and on this side of the unit this is a microwave AGA 2000 flicker fixer and all this did was refresh the scan rate from 15 kilohertz to 31 so you could use a VGA style an RGB monitor without the flicker but with the adapter you can get the 15 the the 31 kilohertz signal to go to VGA if I can it goes in the CPU slot here there we go this is a super turbo 28 normally it would sit with a little box on it with an on off it's about this thick it's a cat side caddy for an Amiga 500 just a Zorro 2 slot but there's these little uh, ceramic sticky pads that I put over the chipset this was 1993, 68K accelerator. And uh, right here it had a 28 megahertz clock. But I soldered in a 50 megahertz clock chip and uh, fired it up and it's been working fine ever since. It did get exceptionally hot, so that's why I put the heat pads on there. Unfortunately, it sits down in the system, so there's no way of, uh, you know, cooling it. And of course has a back and a front, so of course the front would go on the front. Uh, the pins look like dirty aluminum, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and squish this back in here. This board needs a bath. Copyright Commodore 1998. I don't know what revision board this is. I think it was a Rev 6. So... Now we were able to see, yeah, Rev, so yeah, and what you get aside, five Zorro 2s, one, two, three, four, five, and these are kind of ISA hybrid slots for the PC card, um, man, these CIAs have seen better days, whole board is just filthy dirty, I haven't cleaned this thing probably 20 years. So it's going to need to be disassembled, cleaned, and put back together. Okay, so we're going to start taking this thing apart. Okay, now, since we're working on a late 80s, 90s machine, I thought I would get a beverage. That is, uh, compatible. All I have was this. Let me, damn it. So right here, this is the kickstart version 40.68 for the 500 and the 2000. This is a 3.1 ROM. Here's my 8372A Fat Agnes factory. These are your custom chips set. This is Gary, which stands for Gate Array. They give them all funky names. It's a logic chip. Here's Denise and Paul. All these are your graphics and your I.O. And these suckers here and then we have the Motorola 68000 CPU. Oops, your head's in the way of the shadow, you idiot. You know, recording YouTube videos, you think that you have enough light. There is this massive light up here. I mean, 
it's four feet LED. I mean, this thing, it's so bright. It is so bright. Recording videos, you never have enough light. This light, even though how deathly bright it is, it's not even bright enough. So here's where the barrel battery was long ago. Uh, apparently I just cut it. The tips are still there. Look how dusty that board is. Revision 6, final assembly. Two serial connectors for a joystick or your mouse. This is for your keyboard. Look at all these little tantalum capacitors. Ceramics, tantalums, ceramics, electrolytics. These are the turds that never last. So when you get a recap stuff, 90% of the time, it's these caps that go bad. This is all the video capacitors, resistors, the video slot. Incredible machine for its time, way ahead of anything else. The custom chipset made the, gr the graphics on this, the, the ability to do true preemptive multitasking. I mean, read up on the Amiga. It's an incredible machine. So we're gonna get this all cleaned up. So look at this shine. Anyway, here's the plate, the bottom of the board. This is the the bottom of the motherboard. You see my reflection of the ceiling. I'm back and I washed out the top. I've washed the motherboard as much as I'm going to wash it. And I almost lost my 2000 HDP sticker because it's a paperback sticker. There's a little tag where it goes through on the power supply's lower half. So this has been cleaned and dried thoroughly. I'm going to reinsert the motherboard and then glue back on my ROM sticker. You'll see I have a little custom hard drive light right here. That's for this IDE card. The one built into the Amiga is the SCSI light. I should hook that original SCSI up to see what it does. You know? This opening. Oh, listen to that. That was really cool. So anyway, we have a clean Amiga. It works. The Amiga's back functional. We washed it, we cleaned it. We've wiped her out. There's no more goop. It's functional. That's great. So now I'm gonna clean up the front cover. We're gonna put it all back together and then stick it back in the closet for another 20 years.